here. Okay, that's it. That's it? I think that's it. I think, I think we're good. I think we have the data. Greek mathematicians had to measure shadows 500 miles apart in order to calculate the radius of the Earth, but you can do it just by watching the sunset over the ocean. In this video, I'll show you the process I used to measure the radius of the Earth with just the sunset, a stopwatch, and a bit of math. To understand how this all works, first let's draw the Earth with the sun next to it. Note this is not to scale. Now we'll draw a ray that represents the last little bit of light that a person on Earth can see as the sun sets. Let's imagine that the Earth is turning clockwise, and that there's a person lying down on the ground, eye level with the water. If the person's right here, then the sun will be above him. If the Earth rotates and the person is now here, the sun will be a little lower in the sky. When the Earth has rotated so far that he ends up over here, he won't be able to see the sun at all. It will have already set. So if the person is lying exactly flat at sea level, sunset should happen when the Earth has rotated him to exactly this point. The instant the sun sets while the person's lying down, he stands up. Again, this is not to scale. Because he's up higher now, he has a direct line of sight to the sun. It hasn't set for him yet. The Earth keeps rotating until the sun has set for a second time, which should occur about here. If you can measure the amount of time between these two sunset events, you have everything you need to be able to calculate the radius of the Earth. To see how, we'll have to use some trigonometry. We'll construct a triangle whose three corners are the radius of the Earth and the locations of our eyes at each of the two sunset events. This right here is a right angle because those two lines are tangent and perpendicular to the Earth's surface. This length is r, this length is r, and this length is h, the distance between the ground and this person's eyes. We'll call this angle theta. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's r over r plus h. Now let's look at theta. If you go around a whole day, that'll be the whole circle, or 2 pi. If you wait half a day, that'll be half a circle, or pi. So theta is 2 pi times the fraction of a day that you wait. So theta is t times 2 pi divided by the number of seconds in a day, which is 86,400. We could stop here, but let's do a little more math to make our equation nicer. In the picture it looks like theta is large, but the reality is that it will be very, very close to zero, very small angle. So we can use a small angle approximation. For small angles, cosine of theta is equal to 1 minus theta squared over 2. There are more terms that you can add to make it even more precise, but this should be good for small enough angles. Do some research on Taylor series to learn more about how I did this step. Plugging that into our original equation gives us 1 minus theta squared over 2 equals r over r plus h. I also don't like this ugly denominator, so I'll define a new variable x to be the entire length of the hypotenuse, r plus h. That means that the other side, the adjacent side, is x minus h. Now instead of r over r plus h, I have x minus h over x. Now we just have to do some algebra and solve for x. We'll multiply each side by x, giving us x minus x theta squared over 2 equals x minus h. We can subtract x from both sides to get rid of two of the x's, and then multiply the whole thing by negative 1 to get rid of the minus signs. From this we can see that x equals 2h over theta squared. Plugging in our expression for theta gives us x equals 2h times 86,400 over 2 pi t squared. Now I'll take all of these extra constants, the 2, the 86,400 squared, and the 2 pi squared, and combine them all into one constant that I'll call k. My calculator says that the value for k should be 3.78 times 10 to the 8th. This gives us our final expression, x equals k times h over t squared where k is 3.78 times 10 to the 8th. Now x is really not the radius, it's the radius plus my height. But my height is so insignificant compared to the radius of the Earth that we can think of it as if it were the radius. This equation would be perfect if we were exactly at sea level for the first measurement. But the truth is, if you try and get all the way down to sea level, most likely you'll just get a wave in your face. You'll have to start at some non-zero initial height above the surface of the water. To accommodate this into our analysis, we can add another line to the drawing representing this initial height. 
Now there are two spans of time that are of interest to us. First, the time between when the sun sets to a hypothetical observer at sea level to the time when the sun sets to us as we're crouched down just above sea level. And then second, the time between when the sun sets to us crouched down to when we're standing up. There's also the total time of this whole process, which should be equal to the sum of these two times. I'll call the first t1, the second t2, and the sum t3. As I stated before, t3 is equal to t1 plus t2. And t2 we should be able to measure directly. Now let's take a look at t1, which is the time between when the sun sets for someone at sea level to the sun setting for someone at a height of h1. We can get this time just by solving our highlighted equation for t. So that's the square root of k h1 over x. t3, the total time, is similar. It's the time between the sunset for a person lying down and a person standing up. So again, that's just the square root of k h2 over x. Now we'll just do the algebra again and find an expression for x as a function of h1, h2, and our measured t. We'll multiply each side by the square root of x and then divide each side by t, giving us the square root of x equals the square root of kh2 minus the square root of kh1 over t. Each of these terms has a square root of k in it, so we can factor that out. Finally, we can square both sides and get x equals k over t squared times the square root of h2 minus the square root of h1 squared. I know it took a while, but now we finally have an equation that relates the radius of the Earth to the time between two arbitrary height sunsets. Now let's do the actual measurement. Now I start my timer, and I judge that my eyes were about a foot and a half above sea level when I made that measurement. Here. That was five seconds, and I judged that my eyes were about six feet above the sea level when I made this measurement. Okay, that's it. That's it? I think that's it. I think, I think we're good. I think we have the data. Is it set? It's set. We do have the data. H1 is one and a half feet, H2 is six feet, and the T is five seconds. Now we just plug that all into our equation. K is still 3.78 times 10 to the eighth, t squared is 5 squared, the square root of h2 is square root of 6, square root of h1 is square root of 1.5. We'll square that, and I plug it into my calculator and I come up with 1.85 times 10 to the 7th feet. Now we want that in miles, so we'll divide by 5,280, and we end up with 3,500 miles is the radius of the Earth. What's the actual value of the radius of the Earth? Well, you can Google it, and it's 3,960 which means we're not too far off with this estimate. I invite anyone watching this video to try this experiment for themselves, calculate the radius of the Earth, and prove those flat earthers wrong once and for all.